Greetings and salutations, humans of Earth. It is Red Wild Rider once again coming at you from the card vault buried deep inside an asteroid somewhere hidden deep in the cosmos. <laughs> nah, it's just me. Got these two pre-release packs here. Got a box of collector's boosters back there too, but uh, we're going to hold them off. I know I have a box video that I'm supposed to put out. Uh, hopefully it'll be out by the time this is out. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, things have just been a little hectic around here, and uh, I don't always have uh, immense amounts of time to put together videos. I'm just, you know, one dude, you know, putting all this together. You know, I don't have a team. I don't have anybody here helping me. It's just me. So, yep, I have these two pre-release packs, and I figured, you know what? Instead of opening, like, both of them and tearing through them real fast in the video... So, you know what? I would like to still have the pre-release experience, even though, you know, I'm not going to actually get to you know, play with anybody. But I still like the idea of taking, you know, six packs and seeing what kind of deck I could build out of those. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I'm not going to profess to having any sort of, like, tremendous pre-release record or nothing like that. But uh, I think it'll be fun. I'll show you some uh, thought process that goes into... Uh, you know, designing a deck from a pre-release pack. And uh, I'm sure if you uh, have any uh, complaints or issues or whatever, you know, you'll let me know in the comments, you know. And uh, I'll, I look forward to it, actually, because I know I'm not perfect. I know I <laughs> make a lot of dumb mistakes and run a lot of silly cards just because I think, oh, this looks pretty cool. I want to try this out, you know. And then I end up, like, going 0-3, and I'm like, oh, God. But anyway... Uh, left pack, right pack, I don't know which pack, I don't care which pack, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to grab one of the two packs, and I'll just grab the right one, okay. We'll do this one next time. Push it off to the side there. So, let's break open the pre-release uh, pack and, uh, see what's inside, and, uh, see what uh, we're actually going to do with this. Okay. Alrighty. Da, 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 da. Pre-release packs. Now I know some people have had issues with uh, their pre-release pack, uh, the special foils being curled and stuff. So I'm crossing my fingers right now when I open this. I'm really hoping that like everything's in one piece. And we have a whirlwind of thought uh, as our uh, promo card. Okay, it's just one promo card in here. Okay, and I like Whirlwind of Thought. I plan on uh, finding a spot for a tune in one of my decks, so uh, that's the thing. We have our uh, lovely die. It's white. You know, th there used to be a theory going around that the um, the red dice were very rare out of uh, all of them. I've uh, come to find out that this isn't really true. Let's see if there's anything fancy in the rest of the box. I'm shaking it around and uh, nothing. So, uh, all right, goes to the paper recycling. Yeah. Yes, even on the asteroid, we care. We care. All right. Oh, yeah, let's not flash that code on the screen because I do plan on using that at some point. All right, they give us a little uh, sheet here about uh, mutating your creatures. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think we all are aware of how this works. Uh, it's funny, I actually had a, one of the guys in my playgroup thought that the uh, power and toughness stacked also. I was like, yeah, you're out of your mind if power and toughness stacked on these things. It's, it's ludicrous. Quite ludicrous. Anyway, so we have our little punch out card. I like it. I think it's a good idea they did this. Uh, let's see what's going on in the packs. Okay, so there was only that one promo in the, in the pack and uh, not bent. So, uh, okay, I feel pretty good about it. Let's see what we got in these packs now. Let's see uh, how awful of a pool uh, I'm going to have. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the commons a little bit, and I'm going to try to pick out if I have, like, any decent removal. Like, here I have a um, checkpoint officer. Okay, he uh, taps creatures down. This is always a good thing to have if you're going to play white. Uh, Frost Valley Ambush. This, is, uh, this could be cute if you're expecting uh, somebody to alpha strike. Uh, you can get them on that. Uh, Prickly Marmoset's a card you really want to play in a cycling deck, so it's pretty uh, limited in what it could do. Spontaneous Flight, eh, it's kind of cute. It's a little expensive for a combat trick, but okay. Um, Adventurous Impulse is a great card. I like it. Um, 
you know, the fact that the cards go back into your library is pretty solid. So that's always good. Uh, Whisper Squad, if you get a lot of them, he's good. If you don't, don't bother. Uh, Vulpa Keat, yeah, this could be interesting. Whenever this creature mutates, it gets plus one, plus one counter. That's great. You could uh, stack him up and uh, make the creature bigger as you mutate. Uh, yeah, two, four for vigilant, uh, with vigilance for three. Yeah, it's kind of okay. Okay. Uh, boot nipper. Uh, this guy could, uh, get death touch counters, so that's very good. Anticipate's always a fun card to have if you're playing blue. You get a little card selection. Uh, proud wool bonder. Eh, if we have a lot of creatures with trample, we could use them. Splendor Mare. Uh, when you cycle Splendor Mare, put a lifelink counter. That seems pretty decent. 3-3 three, three with lifelink for 3 is not bad. And the cycling ability is pretty decent if you get them late game and you don't really need it. Uh, Insatiable Hemophage. This uh, this is always uh, going to be pretty good, especially if you're going to be able to stack up the mutates on one creature. Um, and ideally, you want to put them on early or mutate onto him. Uh, so this way you get maximum use out of that ability. And we get Lutri. We have a Lutri Companion that we can play with. Which, uh, if we play blue-red, you bet you we're playing with Lutri. I mean, there's no reason not to if you're playing blue-red. We don't need to necessarily have multiple copies of any card in our deck. And it's very easy in sealed to build around this restriction. And we also don't necessarily have to play blue-red. We can play either blue or red uh, and still play him. So we're going to keep him on the side over there. And then we have a Jungle Hollow and a Human Soldier, so we're just going to put these on the side. The lands are nice if you um, end up playing that color combination. And the tokens are just, you know, they're tokens. All right, so let's go through pack number two. So far, pack number one, I'm not super thrilled with it, but, I mean, we do have the interesting uh, potential of playing with Lutri and maybe doing something fun with him. Um, Garrison Cat, eh, one, one mana, one ones are kind of mediocre, but when he dies, you get something out of it, so it's not horrible uh sudden spinnerets that's a pretty good effect for uh one green mana get to give a creature plus one plus three until end of turn and get a give it a reach counter and untap it pretty strong i like i like nice combat trick okay cavern whisperer ah eh, not a super fan giving a creature menace is kind of cute but i mean there's a lot of ways to give creatures menace in this set so it's not uh that crazy uh, giving a creature plus one plus one counter and lifelink. That also seems pretty good. I mean, it's still a combat trick. Uh, but the lifelink counter does stick around. The plus one plus one counter sticks around, which is always good for two mana. It's really not bad. Getting to have these counters that hang around is really strong, I think. Uh, Essence Symbiote, again, if you're playing Mutate, this is an auto include, but if you're not playing Mutate, it's kind of silly. Uh, Raking Claws, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Uh, you know, this is, a, any combat trick with cycling is a good combat trick because sometimes you just can't use them and you'd rather dig through your, your deck. Uh, so Raking Claws, not bad. It could be, a could be a late card, but right now my red is looking pretty thin. I only have two red cards, uh, not counting Proud Will Bonder and Lutri. Uh, Bobbing Wilds, always great to open at least one of these in your, in your six packs. Uh, you j I think playing anything more than two is probably wrong. Uh, but it really depends on the deck you're playing as well. There could be reasons why you'd want to play more than two, but at least we have one that's really solid. Getting your first one's always good. Uh, memory leak, eh, boring. Not a fan. Uh, Essence Scatter, if you're playing blue, this could uh, obviously be helpful at two mana. It's, you know, they keep reprinting it for a reason, and it ain't because Standard necessarily needs it. Neutralize, another good counter spell. Uh, and the cycling again, if you, you know, realize that you don't really have anything left to counter from your opponent because you're ahead, you can cycle and get something to push you closer to the win. Archipelago! <laughs> I, I just like saying that. He's all right. Boneyard Lurker. I like Boneyard Lurker. I really, really like his ability. And I like the fact that you mutate onto him and all of a sudden, like, he gets really, really strong. We just put our multicolors there. Labyrinth Raptor, another uh, pretty decent card. If you uh, get a lot of creatures with meta, so far I don't see very many on in our pile, but uh, that's a thing. What's behind it? A foil Frost Lynx was behind it, and the rare or mythic is going to be behind that. Frost Lynx is, eh, it's it's kind of okay. But we have, uh, 
What the? What the? the, the, the uh, huh? Oh, Labyrinth Raptor was a rare? You kidding me? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> I don't... I, I should have known right away. I was looking at it before, in fact, and I was like, wow, that's a rare. And I just did it again. Oh, boy. What, what a day. All right, spontaneous flight. I think we saw this already. Not bad, but uh, okay. Uh, flying counter, a hexproof, six mana, three, six. Ah, not a fan. Uh, lurking Deadeye. Mm, destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn is actually pretty good. I like that it has splash. Very strong ability. Uh, gaming life, six mana, six, six. I mean, I don't need the life. Uh, six mana, six, six. It's all right. Uh, Flycatcher Giraffid uh, gets Vigilance or Reach. Uh, it's pretty solid. Pacifism, we know how good Pacifism is in Sealed. Uh, Blister Spit Gremlin, maybe you cast a non-creature spell. Ah, if we if we start doing some fun stuff with Lutri, this might be a good thing to have. Another Rest and Scatter, which is already making me feel like I don't want to play Lutri, because I might want to play the two Rest and Scatters. Uh, nice Squad Commando, if you attack this turn. Oh, this is a raid ability, isn't it? Yep. Yep. All right, it's, it's okay. It's a three drop. Plummet is a standard sideboard card. Going into our uncommons, weaponize the monsters. If we have a way to make a lot of tokens, yeah, but I don't really think that's going to be an option unless we get something really, uh, really good, really wacky. Uh, Ketria Crystal, nice way to get some mana going on. And this is the, all these crystals I think are great for this format. I will put that up there for now. Uh, Boon of the Wish Giver, uh, yeah, you know, I might. This might be like a twenty second, twenty third card. Drawing four cards is really good. Doing it at sorcery speeds really kind of bad but if you get this late game it's really really strong refilling your hand when you have enough mana to play another spell or two just seems really good whoa it's a fiend artisan that's nice that's very nice well one of my friends was hoping i pulled the second one because i offered one of them to him if i pulled the second one and uh, there i go there's my second fiend artisan so buddy you know who you are You'll probably have it, uh, we'll probably have already dealt for it by the time this video gets on YouTube. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna try this weekend to get all these videos edited, because I really want to get the Collector's Boosters video done, and I feel, feel bad recording all these videos and then just sitting on them and not editing them. Uh, main Servo, 1-4 Vigilance. 1-4 Vigilance is always boring, but, I mean, it's serviceable. Uh, Gust of Wind, um... If it was just non-land permanent, I would feel a lot better about it. But the fact that you have to return something you don't control, kind of problematic. It does get cute if somebody steals something of yours, but it's sorcery speed, so you can't stop most theft stuff unless it's permanent theft. Uh, Serrated Scorpion. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a little life swing on the back end. Seems pretty decent. Okay, Survivor's Bond. If you're playing humans and non-humans in a good mix, this is really good. It's just, you got to hold on to it until you actually have something to do with it. That could take time. So, I don't know if you necessarily want to do it. Another Blister Spit Gremlin. And now it's like, do, do I really want to play Lutri at all? <laughs> because I have I already have two duplicates of a uh, couple of good cards. And, and a third Essence Scatter. My word. Another Night Squad Commando. This is looking familiar. Another Plummet. We got a Dranith Healer, which would be really good if we get some cycling. Uh, another Raking Claws. Our Uncommons Flourishing Fox. This is really good, again, if you're playing a cycling deck, you can uh, really get some benefits out of this. And we might be able to actually do it. Uh, Channeled Force. Eh, draw X cards, X damage to one creature or Planeswalker. Nah. I'd rather be dealing damage to everybody. That's just me. A Zagoth Crystal. What's the rare? Song of Creation. Uh, if, if we have other good cards in these colors, I'd play it. I don't know if I'd play it just on spec. We'll have to see what else we get. All right. Last two packs. Really hope, Really would like to open another Mythic. That would be, that would be freaking sweet. Particularly uh, one of the Planeswalkers. Particularly not um vivian because i already have one 
All right, we've seen Gust of Wind already. We've seen Ferocious Tigerilla. Uh, no, we haven't, actually. Uh, it's a um, four mana, four, three. Answers Battlefield with a Trample or a Menace counter on it. So if we want to play the uh, Menace Rare that we got, the uh, Labyrinth Raptor, we could always play it. Uh, so that's not bad. Uh, Bushmeat Poacher. Uh, it could be some good card draw. You can get a little bit of use out of it, but it's probably going to be the first thing that your opponent kills once he realizes what you're going to try to do with it. So there is that uh, issue. Light of Hope. It's a, it's a charm. It's either gain four life, destroy target enchantment, or put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That's actually not that bad. I could maybe see main decking it, depending on what else we're doing. And Shredded Sails, another modal spell. Destroy an artifact or four damage to target creature with flying. I think most likely we'd be destroying target artifact with this or cycling it. But if we do get a uh, flyer against us, then that's all of a sudden very good. Uh, Facet Reader, we could tap it to draw and uh, discard, so it's a little looter. Uh, but you got to pay mana for it. Not super thrilled about it. I don't think there's anything really pulling us into blue right now. So, uh, Sleeper Dart. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. I can sacrifice it to stop a creature from untapping. I don't have a garbage pile yet. Okay. I will just put it there. Uh, memory Leak. Okay, we know that's not interesting. Greater Sandworm actually can be pretty good. And if we're doing any sort of reanimation or something with uh, Fiend Artisan, you know... Uh, we might uh, might be able to play around with Greater Sandworm a little bit. So uh, that's fine. Uh, going into our uncommons, we have Majestic Oricorn. When uh, this creature mutates, you gain four life. whoop de do, But it is a 4-4 with Vigilance for four, so that's not awful. Uh, call the Death Dweller. Return two target creature cards with a total converted mana cost, three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a Death Touch counter on either of them and a Menace counter on either of them. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, another one of these uh, something of the something something. <laughs> okay, deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. If that creature or planeswalker would die, this turn exile it instead. That's actually pretty good uh, if we're going to go with a spells deck, which uh, could happen. So uh, it's not a bad card, it's good removal. Everquill Phoenix is our rare, which is a great creature if you're going to mess around with mutating. Um, but I don't know if we're going to do that. I haven't seen any good uh, mutate payoffs. We got another crystal, and it's shiny. I think this, I think I opened a foil Savi crystal in one of my boxes. So Savi crystal foil number two. Okay, and basic land and crap card. I have a stack of crap cards. I've been using them as tokens when I play uh, Commander over camera with my friends. I'm actually working on uh, recording one of those sessions uh, and putting that on YouTube as well. Probably uh, only mildly edited. Uh, we, we had some good games. I thought I recorded one a couple of days ago, but it turned out uh, I wasn't recording at all. I had no idea what I was doing. It was really good. Uh, so most of these cards we've seen at this point. So um, I don't know if there's anything in the set that's really going to pay off with uh, untapping, but you know, possibly a mutate creature that has a tap ability. I don't think we've seen one yet, though. Uh, Cathartic Reunion, always a pretty decent spell to cast. Uh, Ram Through is one-sided fight that can go... Oh, that basically has Trample. Okay, got it. Uh, that's actually not that bad. It's a good green trick. Uh, Whisper Squad, well, that's our second one. I don't think we're getting another one, so I think we're pretty good on not playing Whisper Squad. Uh, fully Grown... Uh, gets a trample counter and plus three plus three. Eh, it's okay. Deadweight always a good card to play, but I don't think we're playing black. I think I think we're doing something like blue red or white red with this. Um, I'm gonna take another look though through the green uh, through the green and black cards since I have those um, since I have the fiend artisan and the boneyard lurker. I think I should at least give it a quick look over. Uh, Day squad marshal. Uh, it's another one that creates a human soldier token. So there is a little bit of a token theme going on. I guess white red would be like a more token theme uh, color in this. Uh, we have primal empathy here, green blue. Uh, beginning your upkeep, draw a card, control the creature, uh, creature with the greatest power. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one counter. So you eventually you'll get to drawing the card. Uh, pretty good if we're going to play green blue. Let's see if we're actually if that's actually going to happen. I mean, theoretically we could because of Songer creation. We do have that in our in the teamer colors. Uh, I don't know what the new name is for it, so I'm not going to try. Um, we have uh, Hornbash Mentor. 
uh, which seems like one of the better mentors. Uh, Auspicious Starix. Um, X is in this here. Oh, yes, this is the one where you want to play with all the permanents. So, if we do if we do that version, uh, if we do the Song of Creation version, we might have to um, we might have to play all permanents. Oh, whoa! I haven't understand that when I record this, I have like this giant tower that my camera is sitting on right up there. Okay, I just knocked into the tower. Um, so I can't see like around the tower. So for most of the time I was just talking there, the that sexy Indata Triome was sitting behind the tower and I couldn't see it. And I glanced over and I was like, oh my God, that's so amazing. And the thing is out of uh, the two boxes I opened, I did not open any Indata Triomes. So I finally got one. And that's good. Uh, full Divine Arrow. Divine Arrow is kind of okay, but not really the most reliable combat trick. Uh, you want to be the one in control of combat. Uh, and you don't necessarily... Um, I mean, you could. I, I, I could see reasons to, to do it. So let me see what we have in terms of green for our permanents. Um, let me separate out the spells. and see what we've got here. See if there's like a curve that we can sort of float on. Because uh, that, that would be a start. So we got rid of all the creatures, uh, all the non-creature stuff. And just looking at my converted mana cost, I see a pretty reasonable spread. We've got, you know, three, two drops. We've got a one drop. Uh, and very heavy on the mutate. Uh, we got five, six, seven. Another five with a six mutate that uh, is can be pretty powerful if you're playing a lot of uh, a lot of permanence so uh it's a thought i mean to to play green because we do it does give us access to a lot of things uh we could probably still play a couple of the spells i mean i don't think i would not play any spells just because of uh auspicious starix although i mean it, that could uh that could do some pretty brutal things if you uh mutated a lot but um uh fiend artisan lets us sacrifice another creature i'm just reading what it does to double check here let me bring it closer to the camera so you guys can see it too when we decide. Ah, there we go. Okay, gets plus one, plus one for each counter, uh, each creature card in your graveyard. And you could X and black green hybrid, tap, sacrifice another creature, search for a creature card, convert a mana X or less, put on the battlefield, and shuffle your library, only on sorcery speed. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems pretty good. Uh, I don't know if we really have any ways to load up our graveyard though. Uh, I mean, Boneyard Lurker wants us to get things out of our graveyard. Uh, Fiend Artisan wants to put things into the great wants us to put things into the graveyard. Uh, I don't see any of our green spells doing it. I mean, we could throw those two plummets right to the back there because then we're not going to really do anything with them. Um, yeah, this puts the cards. Uh, Adventure Simples puts cards on the bottom of your library, so that's not really helping. And I don't see anything in green in here that's going to uh get us stuff on the bottom uh onto our graveyard into into our graveyard um yeah i mean and we only have the one creature with cycling uh and it's the greater sandworm so and if i recall boneyard lurker yeah it returns it to your hand so you're just going to end up cycling it again it doesn't seem uh, really amazing. I'm going to take a quick look through black here, see if we have anything that puts stuff to the graveyard. Uh, nope, that take things out of the graveyard. No, no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope. Nope and nope. <laughs> okay, so we don't have any way to really load our graveyard. So... I don't know if uh, if running Fiend Artisan seems good. Although, let me see one more thing in, in black here. How, do we have any other ways to sacrifice creatures? I think there was one creature we had. Yes, we had Bushmeat Poacher. Uh, do I have any other way to, to kill my own creatures? Uh, black does like to do that, and it is helpful. It seems like black wants to keep his creatures on the table with this pile. Yeah, I just got the one Bushmeat Poacher, and that's it. So I'm not, I'm not really liking... Uh, a potential graveyard theme here. I think 
I, I think creatures going to the graveyard will be incidental. Uh, and Fiend Artisan will probably go to the graveyard pretty quickly. So I don't know if I want to really take that route. And I don't know if I want to play the Boneyard Lurker either. I I, I don't really think that... And how many keywords are we getting from these things for any mutate shenanigans? I don't even think it's that many aside from things that are giving counters. Like black could almost be a splash color at that point if we wanted to go that way. Um... Yeah, this is, that's the raid ability, that's the dies ability, it's the raid ability, it enters the battlefield, uh, that just has flash, we're not really, yeah, we're, we're very low on, on keywords or keyword counters really, or lifelink counters, uh, death touch or lifelink, yeah, so it's like a lot of death touch and lifelink counter or death touch and menace counter, uh, I'm not super thrilled. And the other thing I wanted to look for in black before I put it to rest and, and really start looking at the white, blue, red combinations um, is that, let's see, uh, yeah, I don't think we have any, any big boys here. We would really, uh, well, not Cavern Whisperer, kind of. Uh, yeah, we'd really be relying on green for, for our big stuff. I was going to do something like that. I don't know if... Um, uh, unless unless I find something like really ridiculous in red that kind of works with the black and then we can maybe do the menace thing But I don't even think I have a lot of menace stuff uh, No, 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 we don't even have a lot of creatures in red. Wow We got the marmoset, which is a cycler Let me move this over here. We have the marmoset uh, We got the two blister spits Um we got the Tigerilla, which is uh, Trampler Menace. And the Phoenix. That's it. We don't really have a lot of creatures. We don't even really have a lot of spells in red. I'll, I'm having a feeling that this is going to be... Um, yeah, I... Let, let me see how many... Let me see what I have in blue before I... Ooh, just prick the Marmoset. <laughs> All right, so we know we have our three essence scatters in here. Let me just rip those out. We have one, two, three essence scatters. I just flipped one over. So this would be the more controlling deck. I and mean, we have uh, Frostvale Ambush. We have um, two Gust of Winds. I think it was only two Gust of Winds. Uh, neutralize. So we do have a lot of spells in here. We just don't have a lot of creatures. I mean, we Archipelagor, Frostlinks that big boy and the and the facet reader and that's really it and the glimmer bell uh so once again we're really lacking in creatures in blue i we could uh we could theoretically go the spell route with a very controlling counter spelly heavy deck uh but then we'd have to think about what we paired it with uh blue green might actually be interesting and primal empathy will start to draw me cards perhaps later in the game as opposed to earlier because we do have a decent swath of creatures in green. And we do have uh, a couple of very useful spells, particularly uh, Adventurous Impulse, uh, which could help me get either a creature or land card, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, I think that a lot of the other spells, though, would not really be useful. So blue would be our spell color, really, with like one or two green spells and uh, Primal Empathy. And... Uh, and then everything else, but I'm not I'm not really feeling the the blue green. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I mean, it could it could happen, and that could ultimately be the way that we take this. But I haven't looked at my white cards yet. And the other thing with with blue red too is that in blue particularly, I have multiple copies of a couple of very good spells, and therefore it makes Lutri a little less appealing. And on top of it, the three cop copy card I have is Essence Scatter, which is not going to help anything with Lutri. And the only thing that really helps with Lutri is uh, Boon of the Wishgiver and maybe like one or two of my green spells uh, would be really, really, one or two of the green spells I'm actually going to play uh, would be, would end up being useful with Lutri. Uh, we could, we could team her. Uh, and that is a possibility, but I want to take a quick look at white and I want to make sure that I sell myself on not playing white because <laughs> in a lot of formats, white tends to not really be the color you want to play. Um, but I want to, I want to take out my spells first and look at the creatures and see what we're dealing with here. Uh, we do have a pacifism. We had another, yeah, yeah, we had two spontaneous flights. 
Uh, we actually have a lot of creatures in white, uh, which is helpful. Uh, do we have a decent curve of creatures in white? Okay, that's uh, four or five. That's a one. That's a two. That's a second copy of that one. That's another one. That's a three. And a four and another two. White green is actually starting to look a little attractive now. I mean, we don't really have much in terms of spells from white, but we don't really need them. And uh, two of them give our creatures flying, which is absolutely great. Uh, pacifism is a huge help. Okay. Uh, Light of Hope and Divine Hour can really be sideboard cards. Like, if we, we don't have an extra spot, Divine Hour can go in. Um, hmm. I'm going to take one more quick look through red to see if, if there would be any chance that I would want to uh, maybe do the team or build uh, and run a lot of spells. Uh, that's not a spell we would play. That's not a spell we would play. Same thing there. So we wouldn't be running a lot of creatures. So we don't have a lot of creatures. Oh, well, we do have some in, in blue. Uh, I don't know if given the big guy's double strike late in the game would would really be super effective i think at that point we would probably be winning and we don't really have a lot of big boys to begin with uh let me just take let me take a quick look back at the green this is something i do a lot preparing for a pre-release i'm like looking back and forth at the cards all the time and saying well what do i want to play here you know i'm starting to think i really do have to play uh green and i have to uh figure out if i'm going to pair it with black or with white the thing is i don't really have any removal in black which is uh, actually rather disturbing i have dead weight that's removal that's a return card that's discard uh let's see what else that's another discard spell combat trick yeah i've got a lot of creatures but not a lot of spells and only one removal spell and it's not even really that good dead weight's not what i would call removal uh, we, we did have the one removal spell in green. We had the ram through, uh, sudden spinners. I mean, you would have to start using combat tricks as removal spells. And I hate using combat tricks as removal spells because then you can only remove things that are going to attack. You can't remove anything that's uh, just sort of hanging out on the board. Like for example, if I was, if I had some graveyard shenanigans going on, I couldn't kill a Dranith magistrate because they're never going to swing with the sucker, you know? Um, survivor's bond could be helpful. Uh, even in uh, a deck like the one I'm thinking of putting together where we can <clears throat> sort of futz around a little bit. What's interesting is if I do go white-green, I could also splash black. And I can maybe grab a couple of creatures from black because I do have the Indopta Triome. That will be very helpful. Uh, none of, uh, I do have a black-green land back here, and I don't think I have... I didn't get an Indopta Crystal, but I do have a Zagoth Crystal, which will give me a green and black. Uh, Ketria doesn't really help. Uh, Savai will give me white and black, so I could uh, arguably play one of those uh, as well to give me a little bit extra help uh, splashing a third color. Um, and splashing a third color, believe it or not, is not the worst thing you could do in um, in Sealed. So yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking to not be the dirtily blue player and to maybe just go with some sort of white, black, green build for this. And that also brings us back to uh, Boneyard Lurker, Fiend Art is in a potentially proud Wild Bonder as well. Uh, Wild Bonder as well. So when I'm setting up here now, I'm going to just uh, start to remove all these cards that I'm not going to play. Um, You know, I'm looking at Whirlwind of Thought, and I'm starting to think again about the spell deck. <laughs> because I could play it, but but then I can't play Lutri because I'm going to have to run the three Essence Scatters. That's going to be a non-negotiable at that point if, if, I, if I go sort of all in on the spells. But then I also don't really have much of a way to win either. I'm gonna really going to be counting on the Archipelago to, to win. Uh... Or the uh, Everquill Phoenix. It's going to end up being like one of the two. Because uh, the rest of my creatures, I mean, Wingfold Terran is not that all that terrifying, really. And my other blue creatures are kind of crappy. Uh, and here, really, my best thing is going to be a 4-4 Phoenix for four. Um, 
and I don't have enough removal here to do it. And again, I would run into the non-land cards having different names because I would have to start running some duplicates of things. Uh, particularly, I would want to run uh, both Blister Spick Gremlins, and I'd want to run the um, um, the the three essence scatters. Uh, but you know what? Maybe maybe I'll try to build both decks, I'll, and we'll just uh, we'll see how it goes. Why not? Yeah, I mean, this is my video. I can do what the hell I want. Ha ha! Seems good. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would build this if we were going to go uh, with a white, green, splashing black deck. Uh, so let me see. Let's uh, take a look at our curve. First of all, let's uh, let's get these guys out of here. I'm probably not going to use the Wild Bonder. Uh, Fiend Artisan's a two. Boneyard Lurker's a four. What I usually do is I set up my creatures first. Uh, figure out what my creature base is going to look like, and then I start worrying about what my spells are. Um, Flourishing Fox is a possibility. We'll have to see how many uh, cycling uh, spells we play. Um, same goes for Dranath Healer. Uh, Checkpoint Officer definitely goes in. Uh, Splendor Mare. Uh, yeah, there's no reason not to play a 3-3 with Lifelink, I think. Um, no reason not to play Vulpikeet either. We need, we need Flyers. Uh, Majestic Oricorn, I mean, I guess it's kind of cute. So we have a couple of Mutate guys, too, um, which could be interesting. Uh, makes me possibly want to play the main servals, uh, because it will give my Mutated Creature Vigilance. But it's something that we could look at later. Uh, I'm going to put them both here, and these guys here, and I'm going to leave out uh, the two Cycling Payoff guys, because until we're, we're sure that we're going to have a bunch of Cycling, which right now we really don't um there's no reason to uh, put them down uh so let's look at our, our green creatures and let's see how the curve lines up between the two colors because that's going to be the really the important part of all this uh so we have essence symbiote which is um which is a mutate payoff so let's put that here too uh we have horn bash mentor which helps giving our non-humans trample and i see that we have a fair amount of uh non-humans we actually have a couple of humans too so that's not bad it gives us another three and look green fills out our three spot actually that's that actually works out nice and then we have the top of the curve of uh, honey mammoth and greater sandworm so i am liking this uh idea to go white green and potentially splash black and in fact unless unless i could let me let me see maybe uh we could do some keyword shenanigans with one or two, uh, I think there was only like one creature that had the keywords. Let me, uh, let me get rid of all the non-creature stuff from here. And then this was all the creatures, right? Um, so he has Menace, he has Death Touch, he has Death Touch or Life Link. Uh, I think we're not going to play the Whisper Squad. We don't really need them, I think. Uh, nice squad commando. Uh, flash doesn't. Uh, well, it is a removal spell of sorts. Destroy target creatures dealt damage this turn. I don't know if that's going to be a thing for us. Uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to jump on the token creation game. Uh, but putting one of these two guys in here as a mutate thing could be helpful. And then we can play the essence symbiote. Uh, maybe we'll end up dropping the main servals because I'd rather have Death Touch and Menace uh, necessarily than Vigilance if I have to really choose between uh, the two of them. Uh, I might want to play one of these guys. Uh, and that gives us, we actually have a few creatures now, including the Auspicious Starix. And we do want to kind of be permanent heavy. So we're going to look at, uh, I mean, Pacifism and Dead Weight, for example, are, are very likely to get played here. Uh, I'm going to put these in their respective columns, uh, these two guys. Uh, the what the one thing I'm not and I got to put boot boot nipper too because the fact that we can give it a counter uh, seems pretty strong. Uh, the rest of these eh, I do kind of like serrated scorpion, but I'm sp just splashing black. Uh, so I'm not gonna be running all of this black. I'm gonna only be running a small portion of it because that's then that's not really splashing. Then that's just playing three colors. <laughs> and I don't know if I necessarily want to be playing three colors. I think I want to just be splashing. So uh, we're definitely gonna play pacifism. Uh, and I really think we should be playing uh, Spontaneous Flights as well. Uh, the fact that we're going to be mutating creatures, we do kind of want to put them in the air. Um, we do have a way to get creatures back. We actually have a way to get creatures back from in here too, even though they'd be smaller creatures. 
uh, and really we'd only be able to get back one creature at a time um, and uh, they would get a death touch and menace counter so that's another way to give our guys death touch and menace uh, we might actually be able to not even play those guys and just play that instead um, I'm not ready to play those spells yet uh, I don't think they're necessarily good. I think Adventurous Impulse, like I said, is going to be pretty good. Um, not a huge fan of the Reach Counter, and we only have one of them. Uh, I am, however, a fan of Survivor's Bond, since it seems like we're going to end up with a bunch of stuff in the graveyard at some point. Uh, this might be necessary. Uh, other than that, we don't have any other... Uh, uh, we do have a Ram Through. We're going to probably need to use that. Um... So, yeah, so that's... Now, obviously, this is way too many cards. We're not going to be playing all these cards, and we are going to uh, put in the dead weight over here. Uh, so, uh, Garrison Cat's going to get cut. Uh, I think giving the creatures Vigilance is going to be good, but uh, what is... Uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature, and you gain two life. I don't know if I necessarily want to be counting on the Mutate in this deck. So I'm going to hold off for a second on that. Um, boot Nipper giving lifelink when you already have something giving death touch seems all right, but I don't know if I want to play that many black. I think I would rather play these two guys because they can mutate, and that means I might want to leave the main servals in, actually. Uh, we'll, we'll leave those cards for now. I think we'll pull these, and, and we'll see. Um, we'll see really how much mutating I think I think we're going to be able to do here. I'm really glad to have the Evolving Wilds now because we're going to play that. We're going to play Indafa Triome. Uh, we're going to play Jungle Hollow. And those are definitely... And then, you know, we figure out the basic lands uh, at the end of the story. Uh, but let's see. No, 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 no. no we're not going to play any of those guys, I think. Okay. So, let's see what's going on here. I think Hornbash Mentor gets cut because we're not really playing... Uh, um, Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, no, no. When he enters the battlefield, you put a trample counter on target non-human creature. That could be interesting. We stack up some keyword abilities on one creature and then mutate it once, and then we can kind of go to town. I don't like the fact that our, that our mutate guys are not huge except for Auspicious Starix, uh, but the Starix's ability is just kind of bonkers. Um, you know, but that's a good point. We're not going to be mutating that much. So... I think relying on the Starix to get us anything. I mean, I we just don't have enough mutate creatures, and we can mutate. I think the Boneyard Lurker mutate. Yeah, he mutates. Uh, Vulpiki mutates too. That's right. Okay, so let's see. So we have uh, creatures with mutate. We have one, two, three, and they're all four drops, and their mutate cost. We have a. It's four or three and a three. That's actually not bad. That actually lowers our curve a little bit if we're going to expect to mutate. Um, up here, I think the Oricorn mutates. That's good. The Starix mutates and the Whisper mutates. That's actually six mutate creatures we have. Uh, so that's that might actually make it worth playing. Well, first of all, how many cards are here? I haven't even counted that yet. <laughs> that would be nice to count. That's nine... Uh, 15, 19, oh yeah, we have way too many cards. <laughs> so, so cuts have to happen, and I think what's going to end up happening is, uh, I like Cavern Whisperer a lot less than I like the other one, so that's going to be that. Uh, the Oricorn, uh, that's our Vigilance. We could actually now not play the main servals. Uh, I might play one of them. Uh, let me see. Let's let's leave one of them in for now. Let's we'll we'll figure it out later. Uh, so that's eight, fourteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty three. It's actually twenty three cards. Wow, and it's a lot of permanents, uh, which would make stacking uh, majestic uh, uh, auspicious Starix triggers uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I I do now though want to find a spot for Essence Symbiote, and I think we're going to end up yoinking oh uh i don't know oh there we go eh, 
yoinked the main servo, the last main servo, forgot the Morse code Gary X, also have vigilance. That's a thing. That's important. Um, we didn't have a lot of trample. And that's significant because Proud Wild Bonder is still up here. And uh, I don't see any reason to play it. We only really have, I think, one creature with trample. Yeah, that's Vigilance, that's nothing, that's Death Touch, it's Flying. <clears throat> so I think this is actually pretty solid, and I think at this point we're, yeah, I think we're pretty much locked in over here. Um, I'd probably play one of the Crystals, I think. Looking at my color breakdown, not counting black, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, green cards and one two three uh sorry 12 green cards uh one two three four five six seven eight white cards uh so probably the ketria crystal i th is it the ketria one I'm, it's, I'm still so bad at these damn names no it's the zagoth crystal uh this is the one that we would play and um we don't really have a lot of other cycling so this is pretty much just going to be a ramp slash cycle card if we get it if we could play it on turn three or turn four that's fine. Uh, if we're any later, we probably want to cycle it away. Um, we do have a cycling land. We do have, uh, which we're probably not going to cycle though. Uh, we have an evolving wilds too, so we can uh, fish around and get some stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm actually, I actually, I, I, I was worried going into uh, not just the uh, deck building process, but I was worried going into. Uh, this whole video that was going to open a crap pile and I was, wasn't was really going to be able to build anything. And as it turns out, I feel like I could build two different decks. So I feel like I could build this deck. I feel like, too, that we could do uh, red, white, blue, uh, maybe more red and blue splashing white or maybe um, uh, white and blue splashing uh, splashing red for a couple of spells. Uh, but we could you know jam in a whirlwind of thought and make it be a very non-creature heavy deck. Um, I think I would need a few cards from here. I would definitely need the Checkpoint Officer, the Pacifism, um, probably the Volticate, because I would want to, um, I would want to mutate, uh, Archipelagor onto it, or it onto Archipelagor, however, that would end up working out. Uh, maybe also, uh, the same for Majestic Oricorn. Um... What is Day Squad Marshal again? Is it three, three, four, four? That gives you a one, one. That's eh, kind of okay. I probably, I'm. You know what? Let's let's be fair and not make our things crazy. And that the Zagoth Crystal uh, takes the Day Squad Marshal spot. Four mana, three, three is kind of mediocre considering that we have so much other good stuff to do. And really, we do want to. We ideally would love to have the Zagoth Crystal come down on turn three, so this way we can make our turn four casts for the uh, for the black cards here, um, for the cards with black in them. Because uh, Fiend, Fiend Artisan, we just need green, so we're fine on that. Uh, dead weight, we're fine. Uh, I think for lands after this, um, I do I have a oh I do have a stack of basics nearby. Yeah, I think we would probably look something like this, like. Uh, let's see, we have Plains Forest Swamps, and I think we would go uh, two swamps, and then, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, we have 14 spots, so that's seven, eight, and another six, seven forests, yeah, I like, I like seven forests, green seems to be our main color here, four, uh, this is not the best sorted stack of uh, <laughs> stack of basics. Uh, but yeah, so I think we would be looking at uh, five planes for this build, seven forests. Yeah, seven forests. Uh, two swamps, and remember we have uh one land that produces green and black, one that produces all three of our colors, and we have a an artifact that gives us. Uh, you know something? Actually, I'm now that I'm thinking about it, um, I think we might get away with one swamp and have an extra planes instead, because I, I really kind of worry about not being able to play things like like checkpoint officer. I really want to come down on turn two. Um, 
I don't necessarily want Fiend Artisan to come down in turn two. I might want him to sort of hang around a little bit and see what happens. But uh, remember, we're only playing a handful of spells here. And a lot of our spells are either getting us stuff back from our graveyard or they're, um, or they're removal spells. Because let's see what we've got that's not uh, permanent. Uh, so we have Adventurous Impulse, we have the Survivor's Bond, we have the Run Through, the Ram Through, uh, and the two Spontaneous Flights. And uh, we could even get rid of one of the Spontaneous Flights if we needed to, because I think I think we're I think we're good on on creatures really. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's just our our creatures are a little bit on the big side, they're a little bit on the late side. But we do have the advantage of being able to do something like drop a checkpoint officer, let the opponent waste a removal spell on it, cycle greater sandworm, and then get both of them back with survivor's bond. A checkpoint officer is a human, right? I'm not like crazy. Okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm just going to assume it's a human because it just makes sense for it to be a human. But then I realized this is magic. I should never assume such things. Um, so yeah, so I think this is a pretty decent build. Uh, I think if I was going to go with the white, um with the white blue red deck i would probably uh focus i would probably play the day squad marshal and the garrison cat to get uh tokens to give me some extra creatures on the board uh but i would definitely be playing a very spell heavy deck i think let me uh scoop all this up for right now uh this is on camera so i don't have to worry about you know right now what i did over here i can just you know pull it back um i think if we were going to go white blue red i think what would end up happening is um we could just play Lutri in, in the in the main deck uh, and not play it as a companion. That's that's always... And that's something I think that a lot of people forget that you can do that. I, I forget it sometimes, too. Uh, I don't know if I really necessarily want to be discarding cards, although I could discard some land cards. Uh, Channel Force is a thought. Um, I wish it hit players, but it, it does draw you cards. Uh, we would definitely play Anticipate uh, at that point. I'm pretty sure we, we, you know, we're going to play all the counter spells. We're going to play um, probably the Gust of Winds and the three Essence Scatters. We have to remember to make some room for creatures. So obviously we should be playing Glimmer Bell because uh, it flies. Um, you probably end up playing Frost Links to, to tap something down. Uh, Facet Reader to process through the deck faster. Archipelago is at the top of your curve. Uh, Evercool Phoenix. Uh, I don't think you play first Tiger Rilla here. You definitely play the two Blister Spits because you're going to be playing a lot of uh, a lot of instants. We want to definitely keep the creature number down, but we still want it to be you know somewhere relatively good. Otherwise, we're just going to get run over. Uh, I don't think we have a lot of cycling here. I know the counter spell cycles, uh, the Gust of Wind cycle. No, they don't. But they're uh, they're actually cheaper if we control a flying creature. We have a couple of flyers, so that'll work. Uh, we definitely want to play Blitz of the Thunder Raptor because uh, that would help. I think Shredded Sails ends up being a sideboard card, but it can cycle, uh, so that's helpful. It might make the Marmoset kind of useful too, uh, so we could theoretically play that. Um, it's first strike, okay. Uh, I think we end up, though, have, all right, so we have that. We would have the Whirlwind of Thought. And then we'd have to sort of balance things out with white. So we'd have to play... Um, we'd probably have to play Divine Arrow, because we need removal. Uh, I don't think we play Light of Hope. I think it's still sideboardy. y um, And you know what? I think we end up playing the main servals. One fours with Vigilance. They can block a lot of stuff. Uh, blocking all day long seems pretty good. I don't know if we necessarily want to play any more of the of the creatures from that pile. I was thinking of it. Um, I don't think you play Splendor Mare here. Uh, I don't think you play Splendor. You might have to play Spontaneous Flight uh, to help the Gust of Winds. Uh, it's a possibility. Um, <clears throat> you definitely play Checkpoint Officer. You definitely play pa Pacifism. Uh... Uh, I said you play the Vulpic Heat. Um, mm, I don't think you necessarily want to play anything else. You might want to play the Spontaneous, so I'll hold on to them. But let me see how many how many cards we have over here. Uh, and then Channel Force might have to see play as well. Uh, this is 3, 6, 9, 
13, 17, 22, 24. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get away with playing. Uh, uh, nope. Problem solved. Shredded sales goes away. That goes to the sideboard. Uh, it's very clear that red is our splash color, but we do need double red for the Phoenix. Uh, so our mana base would have to reflect that. But then again, we're going to be playing a lot of blue. The only disadvantage is, is that... Uh, actually, no, that's an advantage for us because we have both blue lands that give us the our other colors. And this is a very blue-centric deck at this point. Uh, we would end up just having to play... Uh, obviously, we can play the Evolving Wilds. You don't really have much else in terms of... Uh, one sec, there was a Ketria. Um... <clears throat> I guess you would jam the Ketria Crystal in somewhere too, and then maybe um, uh, you'd have to get rid of something. Uh, maybe the maybe the Facet Reader. Uh, I don't think I, I'm not sure. There's much else that we would get rid of here. Uh, although we could we could be twenty four sixteen at this point. We only have the one fetch, um, and we have two lands that come in tapped. Everything here is slow. Uh, sorry, it's low cost. I just slow, not slow. This is the only slow boy, but it's Archipelagor. Uh, so yeah, so theoretically, I think I think this could work out too. Um, and you know, we have plenty of sideboard options as well that we could jam in. So uh, I think if we wanted to go with a uh, white, blue, red, uh, you know, non-creature spells matter deck because of whirlwind of thought, we could you know always go this route. Um, Blister Spit Gremlins are going to end up dealing a lot of damage, and because most of our spells are pretty cheap, with the exception of Archipelago, where everything's less than four, uh, and we're going to, once we get Whirlwind of Thought, we're going to constantly be drawing cards. We're able to do a little search with Anticipate. We have the Facet Reader uh, to do a little discard as well. And the Channel Force just lets us, you know, uh, get that one last creature out of the way before, you know, uh, the, the big things happen. Uh, I'm less confident with this one. <laughs> Than I am with the other one because first of all it's a lot of low casting cost stuff which tends to be problematic. We don't have the same fixing uh, that we would have playing the white black green version. Uh, well, white green splashing black, technically. Um, and decks like this, very reactive decks. They're they're very hard to judge. Like you you end up having to play them to see how they work out, and then you you hope that. You know, you have a couple of good experiences because one bad draw could really just set you off for an entire match and then there it goes. Okay, but uh, yeah, I think this is what I would do. I would probably I would probably go with the white-green-black build. I think it's just a lot stronger and there's more stuff to do. There's a lot of creatures in the deck and uh, there's a, a couple of mutates. There's good uh, mutate payoffs in the deck as well. This is this is more cute. This is, this is something that I would like have built on the side to say, okay... You know, I just beat you 2-0. This is the other deck I could have played. Let's see what would happen if I played this against you. And I really... What do I have to switch? One, two, three, four cards. Maybe five. I forgot if... We, I don't I don't remember if I was if I had the Divine Arrow in the other list, but I definitely had the Checkpoint Officer and the Pacifism, uh, as well as uh, the Bulb Key and the Evolving Wilds. So that's four cards I'd have to switch over. Everything else is a completely different deck. So yeah, so... That's it. That's our, uh, which way do you build the pre-release pack? Uh, do you like one of the two builds I, uh, I uh, previewed here? I posted here. Uh, I'm just making up words right now. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, just making up a complete syntax for the English language. So I go along. No worries. Um, or do you, do you have some other idea? Do you, is there some other way that you would maybe arrange this deck in order to, uh, take down your uh, local pre-release? Uh, I didn't get to do anything with this deck. Uh, like I said, I probably would have done the white, white, green, black version. Uh, but uh, it's good thought experiment. And it's good practice to do it, you know, to see like how you would put together uh, a pre-release pack because, you know, eventually someday we're going to be doing this again. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, and there is still like arena and stuff like that to do as well. Uh, so before this video gets to uh, one hour of recording time, I think that the time... In the actual video, will probably be less because I'll probably cut out some of my like pauses and stuff like that. Maybe, possibly. But anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, bell, whatever stuff like that. Leave comments, say hi, hey, how you doing? And uh, this is Red Wild Rider. I'm signing off. I'll see y'all later.
Peace.